parrots are probably one of the most recognizable birds on our planet. They have been a popular pet since the ancient times, and even today many people keep them in their homes. Some of them are small and simple, like the budgerigar, while others are big and flightless, like the kakapo. However, not all of them made it until today. For the past centuries, many extraordinarily and uniquely looking parrots have become extinct, and here is a list of six extinct parrots that deserve your attention. The first creature on our list is the Paradise Parrot. The name says it all. The plumage was extraordinarily colorful, even by parrot standards. Its feathers were a mix of turquoise, aqua, scarlet, black and brown. The tail was almost as long as its body, which was unusual for a bird that spent most of its time on the ground, despite being a rapid flyer. The parrots were relatively small, with the average male size being around 27 cm or 10 inches long and weighing around 50 to 70 grams. The Paradise Parrot primarily inhabited undulating river valleys with the spares, eucalypt woodlands or open forests across eastern Australia's Queensland and New South Wales border area. Here, they fed almost exclusively on the grass seeds and the seeds of various native plants. Their specialized beak allowed them to extract these seeds from their husks precisely and efficiently. The paradise parrots were observed in pairs or small family groups. They made their nests in hollowed-out termit mounds, often at or near ground level. Their clutch consisted of four to five oval legs and the age of independence for paradise parrots varies, but it's generally around 3 to 4 months old. By this time, the young parrots have developed the necessary skills to find food and fend for themselves. There isn't much information available about these magnificent parrots. Even before the colonization of Australia, their population was relatively small. One of the latest studies has shown that the population size of the paradise parrot has dramatically decreased with the rise in temperature since the last glacial cycle. However, humans played a significant role in its extinction. With the colonization of Australia, settlers started clearing the territories for farming and settlements. Colonialism has significantly affected their main living area, the grassy woodlands. A severe drought in the region in 1902 may have been a significant factor in their demise. Countless paradise parrots were shot and skinned by bird collectors. They became rare towards the end of the 19th century and by 1915 were thought to be possibly extinct. For over 20 years, no one has seen the paradise parrot again. However, in 1921, Australian naturalist Alec Chisholm rediscovered the population of these magnificent birds. Later, a series of searches turned up to find a few more individuals over the next decade, but the last confirmed sighting was on 14th of September 1927. Some individuals have claimed to have seen small groups of these parrots over the next two decades, but no evidence has been provided. This is a tragic story as the paradise parrot is the Australia's only extinct native parrot. What an unbelievable creature has gone forever. Unfortunately, there is another magnificent extinct parrot that lived in Oceania, the Norfolk Kaka. The bird was first described following James Cook's discovery of Norfolk Island on October 10, 1774. The explorers saw a giant parrot about 38 cm or 15 inches long, with primarily olive-brown upper parts complemented by reddish-orange cheeks and throat and a striking straw-colored breast, thighs and rump. They lived both on the ground and in tall trees feeding on the flowers, shrubs and blossoms of native trees found on Norfolk Island and nearby islands where these parrots lived. Their native habitat was relatively small. Imagine that the Norfolk Island is six times smaller than the tiny island of American Samoa. That's why they began to disappear shortly after the Europeans discovered them. However, even before James Cook and his expedition, the Polynesians, who lived on the island for some time before their arrival, hunted the kaka before disappearing from Norfolk in the 1600s. They probably caused severe damage to the parrot population from which they would never recover. With the arrival of the Europeans, things got even worse. The Norfolk kaka was hunted for food and trapped as a pet. 
Their small habitats were cleared for farming and settlements, while overhunting became the norm on the island. All of that has dramatically impacted their population, and in the early 19th century, the species likely became extinct in the wild. However, as I previously mentioned, they were also kept in captivity, and the last bird died in captivity in 1851. There isn't much information about them, as they disappeared at the time when humanity didn't care much about the extinction of animals and birds. However, that's not all. What's interesting is that this parrot had a unique call. It was described as a hoarse, quacking, inharmonious noise, sometimes resembling a dog's barking. Unfortunately, we don't have any records of it, but it would be exciting to hear a parrot that sounds like a dog. The next parrot on our list is the masquerine grey parakeet, which lived alongside the dodo and faced a similarly tragic fate. They were native to the Mascarene Islands of Mauritius and Reunion, where they were thriving alongside many other parrots until the arrival of colonialists. Contemporary accounts describe the Mascarene grey parakeet as a grey, long-tailed parrot with large red beaks and long tail feathers. They were about 35 cm or 13.6 inches long and weighed around 500 grams or 1 pound. The masquerine grey parakeet was first mentioned by Dutch settlers in 1602, who described the hunting method they used to catch them. Many other native species of Mauritius and Reunion were lost right after the arrival of humans, severely damaging the ecosystems of the islands and making reconstruction difficult. Before humans arrived, the islands were entirely covered in forests, very little of which remains today because of deforestation, which significantly affected its extinction. The masquerine grey parakeet's anatomy suggests that it primarily lived on the ground and likely fed on the fruits of the hurricane and bottle palms, which were abundant on the islands. Unfortunately, they were also considered crop pests and were extensively hunted due to being easy prey. Yet, Dutch colonization marked just the beginning of the decline of the parakeet population. However, the primary damage to them was caused by the subsequent colonizers, the French settlers, who began clearing forests using the slash and burn technique in the 1730s. This technique had a significant effect on the parrot population. Despite catastrophic human activity, grey parrots seem to have been widespread in Mauritius until the 1750s. However, French colonists' last recorded mention of them was in 1759, suggesting that they likely became extinct shortly after that time. Interestingly, the parakeet population on Reunion Island became extinct much earlier, around the 1730s. Due to its uncontrolled extermination, we know very little about the local parrots, and the next parrot on our list shows it. The broad-billed parrot was a large parrot species that once inhabited the island of Mauritius alongside the masquerine grey parakeet. It was first described in 1598 by Dutch sailors, who didn't classify it as a parrot due to its large size and poor flying ability. The exact coloration is unknown, but a contemporary account suggests that the parakeet had a variety of colors, including a blue head and possibly a red body and beak. Other observations propose that they were mostly dark blue. What we know for sure is that because of their weak flying ability, they mainly fed on the ground, consuming the hard seeds of the various palm species that were plentiful on the island. Remember that we are talking about Mauritius, the tropical paradise where many birds, including the dodo, were thriving before arrival of the colonists. When looking at the broad-billed parrot and the kakapo, we can notice some similarities. Both parrots are large, weighing around 2.2 kilograms or 5 pounds, and they both have poor flying abilities. However, unlike the broad-billed parrot, the kakapo can't fly at all and can only climb high trees. To understand how big the parrot was, let's consider its height. The average male parrot was around 70 cm or 27 inches tall, which is about the same size as a royal penguin. Due to its docile nature, the broad-billed parrot was an easy target for predators and humans, who played a crucial role in its extinction. 
Several factors contributed to their decline, but deforestation and extensive hunting were the main factors. The last known sighting was in 1693, and it was never seen again. Sadly, only one out of eight species of parrots native to the Mascarin Islands made it to our days. Unlike our previous species, the following parrot was native to North America, and it was the only native parrot to the eastern United States. Meet the Carolina Parakeet, a genuinely unique parrot whose unique range of living was from tropical Florida up to snowy Nebraska, which is unusual for these birds, as they prefer to live in tropical or subtropical climates. The Carolina Parakeet was relatively small, green neotropical parrot with a bright yellow head, reddish-orange face and pale beak. It was around 30 cm or 12 inches long and weighted 280 grams or 10 ounces. Their calls were described as loud and raucous, especially when in flight. What impressed me the most was their ability to inhabit various environments. It's incredible how these tropical birds established a native population deep into temperate zone, showcasing a remarkable evolutionary adaptation. What's even more interesting about these parrots is their diet. Just like other parrots, they consume seeds and unripe fruits of various plants. However, unlike other parrots, the Carolina parakeet consumed the toxic cucklebur seeds, which are also considered toxic for most other animals and humans. Some reports of cats known to have died after eating these birds. Fortunately, those seeds are considered crop pests and the parakeet was seen as the primary pest controller against them, so farmers weren't interested in destroying the parrot population. However, this doesn't apply to other humans, their main predators. People hunted them for food, to sell their feathers or to capture them as pets. It's also likely that they were hunted by birds of prey, such as Cooper's hoax, along with domestic and feral cats. However, it's possible that the predators avoided adult parrots due to their poison. Their eggs were likely a food source for egg-stealing animals, such as raccoons, skunks, squirrels and snakes. Its habitats were old-growth wetland forests along rivers and swamps, especially in Mississippi-Missouri drainage basin. Large hollow trees, including cypress and sycamore, were used as roosting and nesting sites. This withdrawn lifestyle helped them to avoid humans, and as late as 1896, massive fluxes were still witnessed flying across the United States. Despite being formerly widespread within its range, the Carolina parakeet had become rare by the middle of the 19th century. The bird's range shrank from east to west due to settlement and clearing of the eastern and southern forests. The last reported sighting east of the Mississippi River, except Florida, was in 1878 in Kentucky. By the turn of the century, it was restricted to the swamps of central Florida. The last known wild specimen was killed in Florida in 1904, and the last captive bird, a male named Incas, died at Cincinnati Zoo on February 21, 1918, within a year of his mate Lady Jane. We still don't know the exact reason for their demise, as many factors contributed to their extinction. Unfortunately, their population had been declining naturally since the last Ice Age, but even after that, there were still millions of parrots a few centuries before the extinction. One of the common theories explaining their rapid decline is the Newcastle disease, which ended the remaining Carolina parakeet population. They were officially declared extinct in 1939 after many unsuccessful attempts to rediscover such a magnificent bird. The United States would be a much more colorful place if only these magnificent birds were still flying across the sky like a rainbow, even in areas where parrots aren't typically found. It would be fascinating to see tropical birds decorating cypresses instead of palm trees. The final, but certainly not the least important species on our list, is the Rodriguez parrot. It was endemic to the Mascarene island of Rodriguez in the Indian Ocean, east of Madagascar. It's unclear what other species they closely relate to, but it shares many similarities with the broad-billed parrot, another member of our list. The Rodriguez parrot was green and had a proportionally large head, beak and tail. 
It was approximately 50 cm or 20 inches long on average, making it the largest parrot on the Rodriguez and having the largest head among all masculine parrots. A French explorer first mentioned them in 1708. When they were discovered, they had frequented and nested on islands of southern Rodriguez, where introduced rats were still absent. The Rodriguez parrot's living areas were centered around the dense forest and woodlands of its natural habitat. These highly social birds usually lived in small to medium-sized flocks comprised of several individuals. These flocks had well-defined territories, which they defended against other parrot groups. The parakeets dedicated much time to finding food, often traveling long distances to locate their preferred food sources. They were especially active in the morning and late afternoon, when the temperature was cooler and food availability was higher. Additionally, the Rodriguez parrot is a skilled climber, using its robust beak and agile feet to navigate the branches and trunks of trees. Their diet consisted of fruits, seeds and flowers of various native plant species found on the island. Their specialized beak enabled them to crack open tough nuts and seeds, allowing them to access the nutritious contents inside. They also consumed leaves and bark, providing them with essential nutrients and minerals. Like mainland Rodriguez, the offshore islets were eventually infested by rats, which is believed to have caused the demise of the Rodriguez parrot and other birds on the islets. Additionally, cats may have hunted the remaining birds, and the rats likely preyed on the birds' eggs and chicks, contributing to their decline. A French geographer reported that the island was being deforested by tortoise hunters, who set fires to clear vegetation. This, along with the direct hunting of the parrots, likely reduced the population of Rodriguez parrots. The 1761 account is the last known mention of the species, and it probably became extinct soon after. It has been just over 50 years since the discovery of the Rodriguez parrot, when this magnificent tropical bird suddenly became extinct because of humans and their interruption into their habitat. If you found this interesting, check out my other video about 5 magnificent animals that became extinct forever.